Hello, Facebook Live, Steve Woody here, Online Mastery, and today's Midday Mastery is episode 8, and today I'm going to be talking about what should you charge. Now, this is a subject which is really, really close to my heart, because for those of you that don't know, I've spent my entire adult life struggling uh, with money, and it's only recently that I've started to overcome some of these challenges. And so I feel like I'm qualified to tell you exactly what not to do. And by doing that, you can adopt and you can improvise and you can use what I tell you not to do and, and make sure you do what you should do. Because right? there's a lot of things that I've done wrong, specifically when it comes to money. Like, I can tell you now that for anybody... Anybody that tells you that they don't, like, money's not important, I don't care about money, and, oh, you know, I don't want to focus on money, it's bullshit. I'm telling you now, money is important. You need money. You have to have money. You can't run a business without money. You can't sustainably live in Western culture and civilization without money. Like, you, you have to have money. You know, but we have such a really challenging um, perception of money. And people say, oh, I hate money, I don't like money. It's, it's not the fact that people don't like money. People don't like the association with money. They don't like um, the outcome of like what people... For example, I know a lot of people that have got money, who have got money, they're worried about what people think of them. Do people only like me because of my money? Are people only like me? And are they fake relationships where people are just after what I've got? So there's a challenge there. There's another situation where people that don't have money, they enjoy the story of not having money. Oh, this happened and I haven't got money and oh, this happened. And people are like, oh no, and there's this sympathy and empathy and there's this connection that people get. So there's a lot of good things like that people perceive that come from not having money. And I can tell you because I've lived and been through all of this. You know, when I used to leave the casino and tell people, oh, I lost 10 grand tonight, people would be like, oh my God, that's terrible. And so I'd have this perceived connection with people where I'd be able to tell my story and people would listen. But in reality, if I took a step back, people are probably like, I ain't going near him. Why would, why would I go anywhere near him if he's that volatile with money and if he's that unreliable and untrustworthy and he can't control his money? Like, and, and from a business perspective, let me tell you now, like, me sharing this today, this was a subject and I was like, should I talk about this? Because I'm in a space at the moment where I'm building up my business and I'm positioning myself. And if I start talking about challenges that I've had with money, what's that going to do to people that want to work with me? Are they going to look at me and go, I'm not going to work with him. He, he, he's not very good with money. The reality is, as a business owner, I have to protect my brand. I have to look after the perception that people have of me. On the other hand, as me, as Steve Woody, I don't give a fuck what people think. So there's like, what do I do? You know, there's like, I really want to live my truth and I really want to do what's right for me. And I believe I have integrity and I believe I'm ethical and I believe I do things for the right reasons. But I can't be governed by other people's opinions of me. That would cripple me and I wouldn't be the person I am if I allowed that to happen. So I need to be able to talk about my weakness. And my biggest weakness in my life, up until recently, has been money. And I know it is for so many other people as well. So today's topic, I really want to sort of pre-frame it with that. Because, look, I, I'm not sitting here saying, this is how you need to earn money and this is what you need to do. That's not what this is about. I'm not a guru, I'm not an expert, and I definitely don't have a track record of being able to advise you the best thing to do with money. But as I said at the start, I can tell you everything I've done wrong... And you can use that to avoid the same situations, hopefully, so that you don't make those mistakes. And also, I can help teach some things that I've learned along the way that might help you. So here's what I've learned. This is what I know so far. What should you charge in your business? If you're looking... I've got another whiteboard. It's not quite my normal whiteboard, but we're making do, right? We're in a makeshift office today. Um, I'll have my studio set up tonight, so I'll be back in my new house tonight with a studio set up. And tomorrow, everything should be back to normal. But for today... What should you charge? This is the focus of the conversation. Well, there's no right or wrong answer to this. And I know that when I talk to people, it's a really uh, taboo subject because there's sales and marketing and there's that perception that we don't want to come across as a douchebag. We don't want to be seen as sleazy. We don't want to sell ourselves because no one likes being sold to. But the reality is everybody wants to buy something. And there is more than enough money to go around. 
There is so much money out there. It's phenomenal how much money is out there. Like, even the government, are, they're throwing grants at people. They're, in, they're venture capitalists out there that are just... They, they, they're so desperate to give their money away. It's just the risk. The only reason that they don't is the risk. It's mitigation. It's making sure that they don't give it to the wrong person. So they want to know that they're giving their money to a safe investment. So they can gain, you know, a return on that investment. And there's more than enough money out there. So if you've got a decent product and service, and if you believe in it and you're a decent person and you're doing something that's sustainable, ethical, you're doing it for the right reasons, you've got good systems behind you, if you're of a solid business, then there is no reason why you cannot earn money. So, getting back to this, what should you charge? The first thing that I always do when I speak to someone, someone says to me, I need a website. The very, very first thing I do is I don't, like, I don't listen to that question. When someone says I need a website, I'm like, okay. But before that, before we look at like here at the website level, let's just take a step back and let's go above and let's look at the business. All right. So I like to take a step out of the website up to the business and let's look at the business first. So what should you charge should in direct relation depend on what you need to earn. So depending on what you need to live, as an individual, as a person, as a business owner, you will have your outcome, whatever it is that you need to earn a month. And I will tell you this now, you must, this isn't a you should, you must pay yourself first before anything else you need to get paid. Because if you do not pay yourself first, I don't care if it's one pound a month, if you are not paying yourself first, then you will not appreciate what you're doing. You will, you can bullshit yourself for so long that, oh, I'm reinvesting it in the business, or, oh, this is a long-term solution, or there's no money to take out the business yet. If you don't set yourself up with a habit of paying yourself, and as I said, I don't care if it's one pound a month, just having the habit, having that system in place to pay yourself first, and then everything else should come after it because you need to look after yourself. If you're not looking after yourself as the business owner, then nothing else matters because you need to be strong. You need to be stable. You need to be secure. You need to have a good mindset. The better you are as a person, the better your business will be. The better your business is, the more money you can make. See? So it, it, it makes sense to do that. So when we look at money and how much should you charge for whatever it is you're doing, you need to look at yourself first. You need to look that you have an amount of money, like whatever that is, you need, to, you need to look at your personal finances, right? You need to look at how much do you need for rent, how much do you need living expenses, how much do you need to enjoy your life. What is that figure? Now, you'll have a realistic figure, like what is the bare minimum, and you'll have an ideal figure. What would I like? Okay, two different figures, because if we're in business, we're not in business to give to everyone else and not get anything back. We're in business because we want to add value, and in adding value, we want to get paid for it. Right? We want to get money. That's the idea of this. And the reason I'm focusing on it so much is because I know what it's like to not have money. I know what it's like to go bankrupt. I know what it's like to lose, lose my wife because of my financial challenges, right? I've been through enough challenging situations now in my life to say, do you know what? It's time to fucking address this problem. Me saying I hate sales and marketing. I don't hate sales and marketing. I just don't want to be perceived as a douchebag. I, I love selling to people because I know I add amazing value to people and I know I'm helping people. And so as a result, I charge for that. And now that because I believe in myself a lot more, because I've got help around this, because I'm working at this, I have a really, really good system in place. And to just to quantify why I'm talking about this, we're two weeks into February and I've made almost 30 grand this month. That is more than I've ever made before in my life. And this isn't just a, oh, look, I've strung some stuff together and I've just bullshitted this out of thin air. This is like, I've spent years building these systems. I've been working relentlessly. Like, Jamie was helping me. I've had other people helping me. We've built these phenomenal systems. I was just too scared to turn them on. I was just too scared to actually put it out there. And now that I've bundled it up in a way and I've got it to a point where it's really, really attractive to other people, people are buying it. People are getting it now and it's a no-brainer. People, people are more than happy to give me a £1,000 for six months, for six weeks because they know what they're getting, the value they're getting. Me coming into the business and doing this, they love it. So you need to know what, for what you should charge, you need to know what you need to live. Now, again, I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to tell you exactly where I am and where I'm coming from with this so that it makes sense to you. A little while ago, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, my outgoings were £6,000 a month. That's what it cost me to live. 
It was costing me two and a half thousand pounds a month for, for me and my wife to live in our house. It was costing another thousand uh, pounds just in my systems, in my business each month, plus other living costs. And I didn't invest, I had to pay, and there's other things. Now, Jamie fronted a lot of that because for a while I wasn't earning any money. And I had nothing coming in. And the reason I had nothing coming in is because I wasn't selling myself. All the systems were set up, but I wasn't selling it. And so the pressure of needing that sort of money and like three months with no income, that's 20 grand in debt. Right? It's really easy to get into that situation. So here, looking at this, I was like, I need six grand a month to live. That's to live. That's just to get by. That's just to be at ground zero. That's not to put money away. That was an obsessive amount of money for my situation. And it's no wonder why everything broke around me because I thought I could do it. In my mind, I was like, we've got this, I'm there, it's okay. I did these business courses, I had these great people around me, I had all these plans. I set my targets really high and I fell and it hurt. It fucking, look, I would trade everything in that I've got right now to save my marriage. I can tell you that right now. But the reality is I needed to go through that process for me to actually say, hold on a minute. What's wrong here? What's broken? When I look at my system, what's broken? And do you know what? The thing that was broken was me. It was my perception around money. And it was only by working at that and by identifying it and actually saying, do you know what? As a man, as, as a, in, in a masculine person, it is really, really challenging, really challenging to admit um, that I'm having financial difficulties. Because I want to be the provider, because I want to be stable, because I want to be secure, because I want to give my family that that ability to relax and know that they're comfortable. And I couldn't do that. And that, for most men, will put you into a state of depression because all of a sudden you're not good enough. It'll, it'll turn you from your masculine into a more feminine or a childish role. And so when that happens, it can cause exceptional pain in your life. And so you have to have a look. And the only way, the only way that I could overcome these challenges was to reverse engineer the process. So the first thing I had to do is sit down and say, what do I need to earn a month? Now, the first thing I did, and this is where my pig-headedness and my stubbornness before caused me some challenges. I, Jamie would always say to me, we need to cut our living expenses. We need to be cheaper. We need to look at what we can save. And I would be, no, we don't need to do that. We just need to earn more money. I was a dickhead. I didn't realize. But in hindsight, when I look back, we were both right. It's not about one or the other. We were both right. We needed to cut down on our expenses so we had a more cost-effective living situation and we needed to work on ways that we could earn more money. So we needed to do both together. And the way that that can happen right now, the way it's happened for me, is I've managed to bring my expenses from 6,000 a month down to 900 a month. Like, that's insane. In the space of like a month or two, I've managed to bring my, I've managed to bring my expenses down from £6,000 a month to £900 a month. So I know that I need to live, I need £900 a month. And I'm telling you this so that you understand it. Whether you use it wherever you are, the numbers is a perception. Whether that's a lot for you, whether that's not a lot for you, I'm just trying to give you my experience so that you can use this and you can model it for yourself. Because it's, it's the, the logic that's going to make sense for you. It's the logic. The numbers are irrelevant. Just replace them with whatever matters for you. So this is what I need a month. It's 900. Now, that's bare minimum. What I would like is to have 50% of my income on my costs and 50% for other things. So I would like to double that to 1,800. Now, I have an OCD and I don't like odd numbers, so for argument's sake, I'm going to say 2,000. All right, so 2,000 pounds per month would allow me to pay off all of my living expenses, which is 50% of my income, and it would also allow me to take away so I have some money for myself, so that I can live. Okay, so I need to earn, this is my money, not living expenses, plus earning and, and going out and, you know, pocket money, whatever you want to call it, money for me, £2,000 a month. All right, so how do I do that? Now I reverse engineer it. What does my business, what does my business need to earn for me to be able to take £2,000 a month as a wage? What does my business need to earn? So this is the next step back. I need to know what I need to earn in terms of what are my overheads each month. What would I like to earn, as in what would I want my wage to be? And then what does the business need to earn so that I can do that? Well, I tell you now, if I'm taking 2,000 as a wage, if I'm taking 2,000 pounds a month as a wage, I would like 50% of my business to go into business growth and to go into reinvestment, and to go into the business itself, and 50% to go to me. So whatever I'm taking as a wage, I want the same 
to go into the business so that my business is growing as I'm growing. So that means right now, if I'm going to double that straight away, I need 4,000 a month, okay? And that's going to cover my systems, my overheads, because my business costs me about a grand a month to run at the moment anyway, through the systems that I'm using, through the platforms and the processes, CRM systems, shopping cart systems, you know, all of the little tools and, and toys that I have to make my business run and function, cost me about a thousand pounds a month. So now I've got a thousand pounds a month in running costs for the business, okay, I've got a thousand pounds going into both R&D uh, and also going into, um, you know, just into a net, so that I've got I want to build up a, 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 a base into the business, right? I've got this, which is my uh, my cost of living. And I've got, you know, another, well, let's just say another 900. So that's going to be, I'm just going to call it play money. All right, so that's 1,800. And then I've got myself 200 pounds a month to put into savings. All right, that's my living expenses. Good afternoon, Lynette. Good to see you. Good to see everyone on the call, by the way. Um, so that's my living expenses. So now I've worked out my living expenses. I've worked out my business expenses. Now, because I'm a limited company, I need to bang 25% straight away on top of that for tax. So let's just say I need to earn 5,000 because 1,000 of that's going to go on to tax, right? Because I'm a good boy, which means that I'll have 4,000 left, which means that I'll have 2,000 for that and 2,000 for the business. Does that make sense so far? Can you see how I'm breaking this down so far? Stay with me. We're going to go back a step further. So that's that. That's that. Now what I need to do, now that I know that my com my business needs to earn £5,000 a month, that's what I need, okay, gross income in sales. Now what I need to do is take a step back and say, right, what am I going to sell? What do I have to offer that I can sell? And I know in terms of what I do... And this goes back to previous videos when I talk about the customer avatar. You need to know your customer avatar. You need to know their problems. You need to know what pain they're in. You need to know how to solve their problems because it's the value that you add. This here is the value that you add. Okay, so what value are you adding? And how much are you charging for that value? Now, for example, I have my book. My book costs £5 if people buy it. Okay, but this is a product. I also have consultations. Now, I'm not doing any consultations, but when I do, I charge £1,000. I did three consultations in December. I'm not doing any more at the moment, but to give you an idea, I could do comfortably, ideally, I can do two a month. Right? I don't want to do any at the moment. That's not what I'm focusing on, but I'm giving you an idea. However, if I was to sell books, I would need to sell a lot of books to make £5,000 a month if they're only £5. So, obviously, the more I can... I can um, charge the more the easier it will be, the less customers I need. But it's like an it's called an ascending transaction model. You start slow, you build it up. So I have my book. In terms of what I have next, I have my live events, which are normally about one nine seven a ticket, and then I have my consultation, which is a thousand. So this is part of what I call my plan, right? When I go into my build, I have my website course. So I have some uh, a website course, which is about three hundred and fifty pounds. Um, I have my done for you, my one hour websites, which are about £650. Or we have custom builds, which normally start at about 3 k up to about 12 k right, And I have a team that develop them. Now the thing is, even though I'm charging 12000 for that, then I need to know that there's costs. There's designer costs, there's developer costs, there's content writing costs, you know, there's marketing costs. So I need to take all of that out of it. I need to look at what I'm going to potentially earn. Out of a 12 k website build, I'll probably take about 2000 of that for myself. So I still need, and that, and that takes, by the way, that's a process. It's normally like a six-week process or to, a six-week to three-month process. So I need to consider how much time, this is what you need to know, how much time and how much money. So what are you going to charge is what you need to know. And regardless of what you're going to charge, how much time is it going to take you to deliver the value? You see, for my book, there's no time. I've already invested the time in writing the book. So now, anyone that buys it, they buy it, I get the money back, it's like royalties. So I don't actually have to invest any more time. Technically, if they buy the paperback version, there's a little bit of time because I have to, I write a letter out, I sign every single book, I send it out myself personally. I don't use distribu uh, distribution centres because I like to be involved in that process. That's a personal thing for me. So there's a little bit of time involved there. So you need to work out how much time you've got, how much money you're going to make. Because ultimately, until you can replace your time with systems, because the idea is that you can use systems, I don't know if you can see this up here, but you use systems to earn the money. 
Because you're either going to give your time for money, if you're in a service-based industry, you'll be spending time for money, or you may be looking at results for money, but even when you're delivering results, you still need to spend time delivering those results, or you have a system in place, and the system replaces your time. Okay? So I could, for example, um, people can go on my website, buy my book, I can send them on to Amazon to buy my book, Amazon will fulfill the order, it will send it out to them, I'm completely hands off in that process. So my time for my book at that point would be zero, and my earnings would be five pounds. Amazon takes their cut, I get about 50p. Love Amazon, right? So whatever that is, whatever happens, you've got to understand that you will probably start your business exchanging time for money. Until you can put the systems in place, that's what I do by the way, I put the systems in place so that you don't have to spend your time, so that you can earn the money by using the systems. That's, that's what I do. That's what a good website should do. It's not about it looking nice and about it doing what you want it to do. It's about having systems in place to make you money. That's, that's the outcome of having a website, right? So then we look at what we need. Now, to let you know, that's what I was doing before. And I wasn't comfortable with it and it wasn't working and I wasn't selling it. Remember what I said about I struggled? The reason I struggled because I wasn't selling any of this. And I didn't feel comfortable selling it. I didn't like it. I wasn't enjoying the process. I didn't like selling at the time. And so... What I would say is you've got your customer, okay? you need to look at what they need. When I really started to identify what my customer needs, they could buy my book, they could buy my course, they could go through everything, but they weren't finishing it. And that's why I didn't feel comfortable selling it, because it didn't feel right. Which is why I actually said, and this, is, this was my epiphany, and it happened last month, and anyone that's following me would have seen this happen. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bundle all of this together. So I've got my individual products. I've got my book. I've got my online workbook. I've got my course. I've got everything that I'm doing. I'm going to bundle it all together. And by me doing that, I'm bundling it all together. And I sold the whole thing for £297. That was a bundle. And I put a Facebook post out. And I said, anyone that wants this can get it. And I had 12 people that bought it there and then. And so I made just under £4,000 from one Facebook post, just by bundling everything together and selling it. Now, can I do that every month? It's possible. But here's what I need to look at, right? For me to do this at 297, if I sell, if I need to make 5,000 a month, all right, and I'm selling this for 297, I know that I need to sell, realistically, 15 of these bundles a month. 15 bundles a month, okay? So we're looking on average, and I'm going to go higher, four people a week. I need to sell four a week to be able to live in that way. So now you start to understand. Now, that's not including other things. Obviously, there's other things that can assist on this. But what I'm really trying to get you to the point of now is how much should you charge? Because what I could do is say, can I get 15 people a week? Is, is uh, Four people a week. Is four people a week, is that realistic? Can I, can I honestly do that? How much do I need to spend on marketing and advertising? Because I haven't accounted for that yet either. And so when I account for my marketing and my advertising, it may be that 297 is too cheap. And actually, to acquire a customer is going to cost me, let's just say it cost me £100 for the sake of the numbers. So it's a free to one of my money. So I'm spending £100 and it's, I'm making 300 back. Okay? So now, now what I need to do is say, well, if I'm spending £100, I wonder, if I put this up to 400 to cover the cost of the advertising, can I still get the same amount of people to buy it? Because now what I'm doing is I'm covering the cost. And now, rather than 297, it's actually, I'm going to do it at 397. And I'm going, to, I'm going to encompass the cost of the advertising to be able to get those people in. And now, because I'm charging a little bit more, I can start to tweak it. And what you can start to look at is, actually, do I need to do this? And here's what I've done. This is my model and this is what I've done. I'm not actually doing a 297. It's there and people can do it and the funnels are set up for it. But I'm not promoting that at the moment. What I'm promoting is a six-week course. And you've probably heard about this. And I'm giving you this so that you can understand it. Because the 5,000 hasn't changed. I need to earn 5,000 a month into my business, right? That's what I need to earn to cover everything. So... What I've done is I've added more value. I stacked everything I've got, plus I've also added me. So they get six weeks of me. I'm running six-week cohorts. First one starts on the 1st of March, and I'm taking two more people. That's it. And I'm not selling it. This isn't a sales pitch. I'm taking two more people, and that's it. I'm done. And I'll tell you why in a minute. 
because originally I wanted to take on 100 people for this and I wanted to make £100,000 and that was my goal. The reality is I could do that, I could absolutely do that, but I'm going to pressure myself so much on the 1st of March to deliver for 100 people and I'm excited about doing it, but the reality is I would rather have less people take longer to, to make the money that I want to make and I'd rather do it effectively and do it in a, in a way that, you know, I've got 20 people so far, well, I've got 18 people so far that I'm working with on the 1st of March. So, with those numbers, let's look at this. What I've done is six weeks. What do they get? They get everything that I've offered, okay, because I'm adding the value, I'm stacking it. They get my book, my online workbook, they get everything that I've added, plus they get my mobile number. They get weekly Q&A sessions. They get accountability. They get 24-7 access to me for six weeks for absolutely anything that they need in their business. And in order to have that, that additional six-week bonus to push them through for the accountability, to get them through what they need, to go through this process. Let me just bring this down a bit so you can see it a bit better. For them to be able to get that, I've charged 700 on top. So the six weeks here is an additional 700 plus the 297 means I'm charging 997 997 for a six week course right and I'm going to run it every two months six weeks on two weeks off six weeks on two weeks off now it's not going to stay at that price the next one's going to be 1997 so I'm going to charge more but for now it's 997 and the reason I'm doing this is because now I know I need to sell five of these a month to hit that target if I can bring five people per month, not per week, before I needed four a week. Now, I need five per month. Okay, now the reality is, because I'm only running it every other month, I need to double those numbers. So I actually need to bring in ten people into every cohort that I do. Alright, I need ten people to start to sign up. And if I do that every two months, that's £10,000 every two months, which when I split evenly is £5,000. It covers everything. So now, that's two people a week. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's two and a half when you consider it. But if I need 10 people over two months, all right, that's five people per month. That's what I need to be able to, you know, it's, it's, it's just it's, it's one and a bit person, if you like. I'm, I'm find some short people, I suppose I can bring those into the equation. But that's what I need. Every two months when I do my marketing, I need to sign up 10 people at £1,000 and that will allow me to have my £1,000 a month which will allow me to pay myself a wage, which will cover all my overheads, which will cover all my business costs. So that's what I need to charge. So now I know what I should charge, I need to make sure there is enough value that people can see enough value in this process for me to justify charging that. Now, I can tell you right now, everything that I've got plus my time and what I'll do for people's business is easily worth 2000 Easily worth £2,000 to people. There are people out there right now in my industry who are on stage, who are positioning themselves as these funnel experts, as these online business gurus, and they are charging much more than 2000 a month. There are people that are charging a lot more than that because of the hype and the BS and the stuff they're putting out there. They're positioning themselves very well. What I'm interested in is how I'm going to do this and how I'm going to position me. Now, the only way I can do this is say, if you're going to invest a thousand pounds with me, then you better make sure that you get more than that back. If you're going to put a thousand pounds in with me and you're not going to earn that back, that is a bad investment. So for me to be able to promise you that you're going to get results, you will, at the end of the six weeks, be making sales. You will have this system for you set up and you will be making money. And if you are not, within three months so I'll give you six weeks after the six week course and if after three months you're not making money I'll give you a full refund that's my promise because I know this shit works because I know this works because I'm doing it and so you need to understand there's no point like this is where a lot of people go wrong a lot of people say what should I charge mm, 50 pound an hour mm, 60 pound an hour and they just pull it out their ass they're just making these numbers up you see my numbers Yes, all right, I'm choosing the numbers that I want, but there's logic behind it. There's a reason I'm reverse engineering the process and I'm charging what I need, plus I'm adding the value to make it work. I actually started off a few years ago in a conversation with a gentleman called Elliot Kay, amazing guy. He, um, I had a coaching session with him and he said, what do you value your time at? And I said to him, I value my time at £10 an hour. I was a lorry driver at the time. That's what I valued my time as. I did time per hour, £10 an hour. It was like £15 with overtime. That was my comfort zone. And he said to me, you should charge your time out at £200 an hour. And I just remember like snarking at him and thinking, you fool. 
£200 an hour. Who's going to pay me that? It's just, it was just stupid to even think £200 an hour. Here's the funny thing. I left that job and I went to work in London and I had a really good job. I was, you know, I was earning 32000 as a base salary uh, for a company, uh, as an IT company. And I was there for a while. Uh, it was a friend of mine that introduced me to the company. It was my first actual job in London as a sales director. I was flying over to Denmark every two weeks. It's a fantastic job. Hey, Gal. Um, and so I was earning good money. I had commission as well. So th th with the commission structure as well as my basic, it was a six-figure salary. It was an amazing salary for me, going from a lorry driver on £10 an hour into that environment. Then when I got into entrepreneurialism and I started building my own business and working for myself, I realized that I wasn't paying myself first. I wasn't paying myself at all. I was trying to, like earn money and do this and I was so focused here on like how do I how do I charge money how do I make money how do I make money like I wasn't looking at what do I need and I wasn't looking at what value can I add to get that I wasn't looking at any of this and so by looking at what I needed and looking at what value I was going to add and looking at what I needed to charge it's maths it's simple maths it's a numbers game you look at what you need to earn how many people you need to earn and then you you set KPIs you set yourself targets and you make sure that you achieve those targets so that's it that's that's the simplicity of it now, what was funny about it is when I was in this process and I was going through this, I was like, what should I charge? And Elliot Kay said £200 an hour and I said, don't be stupid. I'm only worth like 10, maybe £20 an hour. I got hired. I got hired by a guy called Chris Adams who um, wanted me to rebuild his website for him. And so I was working in London with Chris, a great guy, and he was paying me a monthly salary he was paying me, it was like £2,000 a month to work for him, to build his website and to do his online presence. Now, the funny thing about this is he believed in me more than I believed in myself. And because of my low self-worth and because of my, uh, my low self-esteem at the time, and I didn't trust myself and believe in myself, I couldn't value myself properly. And so a lot of the things with what you should charge, and this is what happened to me, is bullshit. It's internal dialogue telling you what you can and can't do. Right, And the internal dialogue, you need to let it go. It's not serving you. You need to look at this. You need to work this out. This has nothing to do with emotion. Right, This is completely emotionless. This is cold heart maths, and this is a process. And when you look at it as a process, you can take the emotion out. You can charge what you need to charge. Because when I wasn't charging my value, when Chris hired me out, he was hiring me out at £200 an hour to his clients to work on their websites. Because he could see the value that I couldn't in myself. And it was years and years and years after that. And now, like now I'm starting, I'm starting to charge what I'm worth. Starting to. But there's a transition. I had a conversation with an old client who's on my Facebook. He probably won't watch this video, but if he does, I'll... I'll, I'll Tell him now, I think he's a dick. Because he's, I've, I've charged him £50 a year. £50 a year to, to host and look after his website. I also rebuilt his website for like £100 or something years ago. Now, he sent me an email and he's like, I need you to do this, I need you to do this. I need, and he's expecting me to do all of this work for him for free because he's been paying me £50 a year. Like, his perception of me is so warped. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not, that's not what I do. Like, if you want me to do the work for you, I'll help you. But you're, you're paying me for my time. And so he, he sent me an email back saying, oh, be professional. You know, you should be doing this. It's your, your responsibility to do this. And I was like, be professional. Here's an invoice, £250 for an hour's work. Fuck you. And I did that because... I'm not that same person who I was anymore. I value myself now. I didn't value myself before. Now, it's not his fault. It's not his fault because I educated him that that's how I was. Do you see? I, I taught him that I didn't value myself. And because I taught him that I didn't value myself, because I didn't charge my worth, because I work for free, because I help people, because I was so available, because of that, why should he value me? Why should he pay me what I was worth? So now, I've changed. I started valuing myself at £50 an hour. And so I got to that point where I left that client of like £10 an hour and working for free. Because here's the problem. If you want business, you're like, oh, I'll work for free. I'll work for free. I'll do this to get customers. I'll do this to bring in. All you're going to do is educate them to not pay you. Give some stuff away for free, yeah. Like I'm doing this Facebook Live for free, right? But I'm not trying to 
poach customers. I'm not trying to get you to become a client of mine. I'm trying to add value because you may in the future know someone who needs my services and you may refer me. I'm doing this because I can put this on my YouTube channel. This can become part of my podcast. It's a way of getting me out there so that people who want to work with me can. So I'm not doing it to specifically say, oh, I want to work with you, this is for my business. I'm doing it as a way to say, if I can help you and you can see value in it, then you know, you'll, you'll remember me. That, that, I don't mind doing that because although I'm doing it for free, per se, as in I'm not charging you for this, I'm giving value. And the return of that is that I'm in your minds when you think of me and when you think of what you need in terms of these systems and you refer me. And that's how it works, right? That's business. So there is a value there. It's this is instead of me paying a hundred pounds for a car. Like here's the thing, right? I I spend it costs me to get a client on Facebook through Facebook ads at the moment. It costs me about a hundred and fifty pounds, about a hundred and fifty pounds per lead or per uh, registration, or, or sorry per sign up uh, or conversion if you like. So that hundred and fifty pounds, if I can do a Facebook live and I can sign two people up, I've just saved myself three hundred pounds in marketing costs. Do you see what I mean? And so it's like, it's just having different channels. SEO is great, but it's only one thing. Paper click's great, but it's only one thing. Facebook lives are great, but it's only one thing. And it's a combination of all of the things that make up your marketing that get you out there. But you have to know what your pricing structure is. You have to know because if, you, if this is broken and you start promoting yourself into a broken model, then it's going to hurt. And I'm telling you that from experience. There's a lot of fucking pain here when you're working and not getting paid for it. I can tell you that from experience. I had a breakdown because I had three clients that I was working for. I was doing 40 hours a week building three separate websites for three people and none of them were paying me. And I wasn't paying my bills because I didn't like work. Why do you think I do so much charity work? I, I will put charity work before paid work because of the, 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 the attachment I had around money. So now, because now I'm starting to get to the point where I value myself, I respect money more, I understand my limitations through my past experiences with money, I'm overcoming that, now I'm having a phenomenal month. My personal life might be going to shit, but my business is fucking booming right now. You know, I'm paying off all my debts, I'm at the point where I worked out that to clear my debts would have taken me the 50 grand I owe that I have to pay back because of all the shit that's happened. Uh, the 50 grand would have taken me 30 years to pay off. I've already cleared 20% of that. It's sitting, in, it's, well, it's, it's sitting in a sort of escrow at the moment, if you like. It's coming through. There's like strike payments coming through. There's handshake deals. There's contracts. There's invoices. Like it's all in the pipeline. But there's 30K sitting in my pipeline at the moment. It's closed. It's done. That's sold. That's just going through over the next sort of three to six months. Like I have all of this built. All right. And I, I sort of set a target. And I might not have hit my 100 grand. But I'm halfway through the month and I've done 30. That's more than I've ever, ever, ever done before. That's an annual wage in two weeks. Now, I haven't even taken the time to process that yet, to actually acknowledge that. This shit fucking works. When you apply it, when you use this system, when you take the emotion out, when, when I got out of my own head, when I stopped looking at what should I charge and I actually looked at what I need to charge, when I started looking at what the market was charging, I'm still undercutting all of my competitors. I'm still undercutting them all. I'm adding more value, I'm giving more value to my clients, I'm getting better results for my clients, I'm undercharging still, but I'm still, I'm still, even though I'm undercharging, getting enough for myself. Most of my clients will tell you, you should charge more. Most of the people that I show my system to say, you should charge more. But the fact of the matter is, I'm happy charging that, and I can charge that, and I can still live, and it's a win-win situation. So you need to look at this for your, I'm telling you my example, and I'm giving you my, like, you know, not many people do this. Not many people go through this. I'm giving you this so that you can apply it for yourself. So that you can go to your business and do it for you. Now here's the thing. I was charging 10, 20 pound an hour. I upped my rate to 50 pounds an hour. Now I did that because I was like, people said you need to up your rate, so I did. I had a conversation with a seven year old. A seven year old boy turned around to me and he said, why do you charge 50 pounds an hour? And I was like, it's a good question. Why do I? And he turned around and said, why don't you charge 60? And I said, why 60? And he said, because then it's a pound a minute. And that was the logic that I used to up my rate from 50 to 60 pounds, based on a seven-year-old's advice that I should be charging a pound a minute. I then went out to a conference in Las Vegas. I was invited to speak at uh, an event out there. Uh, I sat on the panel with a, a great guy who runs an agency. And the, the event was how to 2x your business, how to double your business. And so, and it was run by a company, Femco, great company. So I went out to their summit, we went out there, I ended up speaking, and um, 
after I spoke, another gentleman spoke, great guy, runs a company called You Gurus, an amazing guy, and he said, the easiest way to 2x your business is to 2x your rates. If you want to double your business, just double your rates. You may get less clients, but you're going to double your rates. Uh, and you're going to double your business. So I, I literally, whilst I was at the conference, I sat there, I had Jamie next to me, I opened up my laptop, I went into WooCommerce, I went into my hourly rate, which was 60, and I just went, delete, 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 120. And that was where my rate became 120. And my rate had stayed at that, and I was so nervous to do that. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I didn't want to do that. But I upped my rate to 120, and do you know what? People paid it. And people have paid it ever since. And it made me realise that the reality is that I am worth that. Because of the value that I give to people. And there were people that were happy. I have people that pay me 120 an hour literally just to sit on a call and be a sounding board. I don't even have to do anything. They pay me it just literally so that they can talk to me. And they figure their own shit out. And I nudge them in the right direction. But the value that they get, spending that hour, that 120, what they unlock, what they go on to do, is worth so much more. All right? It was my own self-worth. It was my shit that got me in the way. And because it got me in the way, I wasn't sure what I should charge. But here's the reality. I w I'd never figured this out before. Never looked at this. In fact, whenever Jamie used to tell me to sit down and look at the finances, I'd freak out. Because I hated looking at this because I never had the money. What's the point of looking at my balance sheet when there was no money in the accounts, right? So I never looked at it. But the reality is you have to. You have to look at this. Because unless you face the elephant in the room, unless you get the monkey off your back, unless you actually sit down, face your fears, and deal with this... If you're struggling financially, the first thing you need to do is reverse engineer what you need, how you're going to get it, what value you're going to add, how you're going to perceive the value, and then how many people you need to create that system. That's it. That's the system. How many people do you need to sell at what price, what are you going to offer them to make sure you cover your business cost so that you can take a wage? That's it. I went and did a um, certification recently with a guy called Derry. Uh, the certification was called CCM. And it qualified me as a coach, consultant, and a mentor. Um, and I love it because I'm not saying that you should be a coach or a consultant or a mentor. I don't think that you should be um, any one of those things. I think you actually need to be all three. And I think there's times when you need to take your coaching hat off and you need to put your consultant hat on. There's times when I need to mentor people. There's times when I need to coach people. It varies. It's different. And so I can't just do one thing. I need to be able to do all three. So I got qualified as a CCM and there was a hundred of us in the UK. There was literally, it was a hundred people that were qualified and that was it. So there's only a hundred of us and some of these people are phenomenal people. Um, some amazing, amazing people that are in this, um, this little close community of, of, of CCMs. And they all charge a lot of money in their industry. And so I spoke to Derry and I pulled Derry aside and I said, look, realistically, what should I charge as a CCM? If I was to deliver the strategy on a page and I was, you know, because getting accredited by him to do to deliver his material and that was what that's why now it's not about websites anymore like websites are here but i want to know about the business first i'm sick and tired of building websites when someone says i need a website i don't give a shit what's the business like because if the business is crap there's no point building a website for it because i'm doing you a disservice because all i'm doing is building you out a system that looks good but for a shit business you need to make sure the business is in check before you build a website otherwise all you're going to do is waste time and money and you, so you need to know, right? If you need to get proof of concept out there, great, get proof of concept out there. But you don't need a full, fully built website to get an MVP. MVP is a minimum viable product. If you need a minimum viable product to test the market, to see if it works, then get it out there. Get a two-week trial on ClickFunnels, build a funnel, sell the shit out of it, see if it works. That's all you need to do. Anything else is bollocks. You need to be agile. You need to test. You need to make sure it works. You need to make sure you've got a client base. You need to make sure that you have, you have a place in the market. And then build out your systems. Where do you get a CCM uh, qualification? You, I don't think you can get it anymore because there was literally only 100 done in the UK. Um, I'll tag Derry in this. Derry at Llewellyn Davison. Uh, he runs a company called BGI, which is Business Growth International. So it's his, it's his certification that he's created. Uh, the accreditation is, um, is done through his company. But I know he was limited to 100 people and we did that last year and so that's done now. So I don't believe that he's doing any more. Um, and so, yeah, that's the point, right? Is that I want to look at the business rather than the website. So then I asked Derry and I said, Derry, what should I charge? And Derry said that he recommends that everyone who's delivering the strategy on a page should be charging £250 an hour. And I remember I had that exact same feeling. It was that exact same feeling that I had with Elliot 
when he said I should be charging 200 and I was charging 10. It was the exact same feeling that I had when I was charging 50 and he said I should charge 60 and I was like, should I put my rates up? It was the exact same feeling that I had when I charged from 60 to 120. And the fact is, I did it. I put my rates up to 250 an hour. That is what I charge. My hourly rate now is 250 an hour. Do you know why I've done it? Because I don't want the hourly rate. I don't want people to pay me per hour. If someone wants me for an hour, then I will charge them 250 for that because that's not where I'm at. Where I'm at is six weeks. I'll spend six weeks with somebody and I will charge them a thousand pounds and I will go through this entire process with them because I've got the systems in place because I know I can do it because it makes sense because I know that if I bring my 10 people on board I know I make my cut I know I hit my targets I know what I do and that way all I'm doing is focusing on 10 people for two months 10 people for two months do you know what I can do to your business in two months I can, I can actually transform your life in two months. I can bring you an income. I can, as long as you've not got the self-worth issues, as long as you're not in scarcity, as long as you're not caught up in your mind, if, you've got, if you can create content, if you know what you're talking about, if you can be an authority in your industry, and if you've got a good product or service, I'll, I'll, I'll get you to where you need to be. That's not a problem. I can do that because I've done it. The challenge is, with most people, when you say what should you charge, is what do you value yourself at? Because ultimately, you've got to get over that shit. You've got to take out the emotion, look at the process, and that way you can figure out what it is that you should charge. I hope that makes sense. I, I hope that this has been a useful uh, session. I really wanted to cover this because I know that there's a lot of people out there that are just making numbers up, and they don't. And there's a lot of other people that just don't know what to charge. But this, this process, and just to recap one last time, know what you need to pay yourself. Know what you need to take as a wage. Know what your business needs to earn so you can take that as a wage. Okay, Include your business cost, your overhead, your tax, all the other bills. So you know what you need. You know what your business needs. And then work out what you can offer, what value you can offer, what you can charge for that value, and how many people you need to sell to. So that you can work out how many you need to sell to, what your advertising is going to cost, and then you reverse engineer the product or the process so that you know exactly what you can charge for your products to the people that you need to charge to to make the money so that you can live. Make sense? All very useful and makes total sense, thanks. Monica, you are more than welcome. I'm going to have a very quick look through the uh, the questions, see if anyone said anything, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, the fact we need to address with our relationship with money, uh, the system presented, Steve, uh, is it in your book? Absolutely. Everything that I talk about is in my book. It's in my book. I've got online videos through my workbook. I, do, I cover all of this. Like All I'm doing on these Facebook Lives is just regurgitating information that I've written or that I've already put out there. I'm just put. I'm just doing it in a way that I can talk to you about it. But all of this is like I've created all of this in the past. I've gone through it. That's why I know it works. Thousands of people now have read my book, and I have comments and feedback on people that have applied this. So yes, it absolutely works for other people. I just, you know what? I never applied it for myself. Do as I say, not as I do. You know, I mean, I'm learning. I make mistakes. I'm human. The difference between me and a lot of other people is that I don't mind getting on Facebook and admitting that. Remember, it's my vulnerability. It's not my weakness. Yeah, I'm in a great place because I share like this, but I'm not I'm not saying it to, to, to discredit myself or to put myself down. I'm helping you to learn by my mistakes. You know, you will make your own mistakes in life and you will get an emotional connection to those mistakes. And the bigger the emotional connection you have to your mistake, the quicker and the bigger the better you'll learn. If you're clever, you'll learn by other people's mistakes. So you won't even have to make them. That's what I'm offering you. I'm offering you the opportunity to learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to. I know I'm going to be successful because I'm running out of things to do wrong. Um, do people actually ask your hourly rate or do you charge per project? Um, if I'm doing a website build, we'll charge it out per project. And what I'll do is I'll speak to my designer, I'll get a quote. I'll speak to my developer, I'll get a quote. Um, I'll look at the marketing that needs to happen and then we'll, we'll base it up accordingly from that. Um, I normally look to take per project if it's if it's a website build. I, I look to take about two thousand. I normally charge a thousand for the strategy, and I like to take a thousand for project managing it. So I look to take two thousand out of the equation, and I try not to get too involved in that. I just I deal with the customer because the the thing with me, the reason that I'm different to most people is I understand the designers. I'm not a designer, but I understand them, and I'm not a developer, but I understand them. I can develop and I can code, but I'm not as good as my developers, right? So I understand design, I understand development. I'm a business owner, so I understand business, and I understand 
structure and strategy and what needs to happen. I also, as a human being, um, I understand human psychology. So I understand the customers and I understand what they need. And so as a result, I'm quite good at understanding the marketing side of things. Because when you look at design, development, when you look at business and when you look at marketing, like those four pillars, I kind of sit in the middle. And so I, I like to think that I can connect to all four sides. And then, like for me, I connect to the business owner. Because what the business owner doesn't realize is when they say, I need a website, they're not considering all the different avenues and things they need to go through. So I tend to charge per project and then I, I pay all of the different people, the different areas, and that's the quote, and they get the result. I don't, like, I'm not interested in building websites anymore. Like, I'm really not. Like, for me, building websites, I'm done with that. You can go on, you know, go on people per hour, find someone in India, you can get them to build your website. The only thing you need to know as the business owner is you need to educate yourself on what questions to ask when you build your website. When you build a website, the only difference between a good and a bad website is the questions you ask. It's a strategy. You know, you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint. It, well, you could, but there's no chance it's going to, you know, there's no guarantee it's going to stay up. So you need to understand a plan and you need to understand a strategy. And that's what I do. I work on the, the questions that you need to ask and I look at the results. If you're building a website, the only thing I'm interested in in your website is what are your results? What are your outcomes? Okay, how much money do you want to earn? How much brand exposure do you want to get? How many people do you want to put onto your email list? What are your, what are your outcomes? And how do we get you from A to B? That's it. Because it results of what counts, right? It's a business. That's what we need. So I'm not really bothered about the hourly rate. I'm not even really bothered about what charge per project. I'm interested in what are you going to get? A client I've just taken on wants to make an extra four grand a week. So I'm quite comfortable charging him a thousand pounds a week, knowing that he's going to get a three to one on his money. Well, a four to one on his money, but he's going to spend, he's going to spend a thousand pounds with me to get four thousand back. As long as I can bring him in four thousand pounds a week, who gives a shit what I'm charging him? As long as he's making more than he's spending, he's happy and he'll scale it. Because the next question that he had for me, as soon as I said we could do it, the next question he had is, can I pay you two grand a week? And can you bring me in eight? Because it's a business, right? So then I have to actually look at it and go, can we do that? Is it possible? How do we do that? So you'll see over the next three months, I'm going to be working with this guy. And I've just, I've just quoted him. And I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not going to divulge the information at the moment. But, you know, I've just... I've just quoted him close to five figures for the next three months to build out his website. Um, and it's like his website is three pages. He's, he's got three pages on his website. That's it. He hasn't even got any systems. No systems. Three landing pages. That's it. Really simple. A contact form. And an app. And pointing people to his app. It's like so simple. All of the time and effort is going to put on the advertising and the marketing and, the, and getting the people to do what they need to do and the, and the following up and the nurturing. That's That's like where it's at like people say I need a website I did a video the other day saying do you need a website because a lot of people they get caught up in it it's all about the results you just need to know what is the quickest and easiest way to get the results alright guys I'm going to go now I hope that's been useful um, remember value yourself you've got to if I can do it anyone can right awesome alright guys I'm going to go I'm just having a look at all of this heard this the other day you can edit a bad page, but you can't edit a blank page. Nice. I like that quote. It's true. 80-20 rule. Pareto principle. Get it out there. Anything's better than nothing, right? That's that's what I've learned. Perfection is its own imperfection. So, alright guys. Hope you had a good day, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.